treat other people well. That notion exists all throughout the Bible, in the entirety of Scripture, from Jesus talking about the Good Samaritan who went out of his way to help somebody who needed him, to the person who came and asked, what's the greatest commandment? And he goes, uh, love your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And the second is just like this, love your neighbor as yourself. God is always, throughout biblical history, trying to get us to not only treat other people well, but more importantly, to empathize with people, to place ourselves in the shoes of those around us. And while he talks about it all throughout the Bible, there's nowhere that I believe is more clear than Exodus chapter 22, starting in verse 21. I want to read it with you. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 22, verse 21, you shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him. And it tells us why. For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. I love this thing because God is relying on our memory of the time when we were oppressed, the time when we were foreigners, the time when we were wanderers, the time when we did not have a place to keep ourselves or to call our own. God's relying on our memory of those things to push us into activity for those around us. The notion is that not only will we not oppress them, but that we'd remember how we felt and how much help we needed when we were in these kinds of places and will extend ourselves to those who need us the most, the foreigners, the strangers, the travelers in the world around us. But he's not done yet in the lesson on empathy. He continues at verse 22 and says, you shall not afflict any widow or any orphan, if you afflict him at all, and if he does cry out to me, I will surely hear his cry. Now, don't miss this thing. See, widows and orphans, they cannot provide for themselves. In the biblical narrative, in the context of the timeline, men were the ones who were providers for their families, for their wives, for their children. And widows don't have husbands, and orphans don't have fathers. The text says that there are people who are without protection, without provision, without care, who are in need of support, who are in need of help. And what he's calling us to do is to not oppress them, not take advantage of them, not beat them down and trample upon them. But God knows, right, that there is a part of us that is still wrestling in sin, still selfish and, and, and self-centered and self-righteous. So God has to appeal to our logic. Look what the text says. He says, don't afflict any widow or any orphan. Do not oppress them. Don't take advantage of them. He says, and if you do, if you afflict him at all and he does cry out, I will surely hear his cry. Verse 24, he says, and my anger will be kindled and I will kill you with the sword. Now, I don't know about you, but that seems harsh to me. I mean, I oppressed somebody. I mistreated somebody. I took somebody for granted or or took advantage of their, their situation. And, 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 and I, I hurt them. I get that, God. But why would you go so as far as to kill me? Look what he says in the text. He says, I will kill you with the sword. And when he does that, he says, then your wives will be widows and your children will be orphans. God knows the moment you hear that, you start thinking about your own people and realizing how much hurt they'll be in, how much help they will need, and how much it would pain you to know that somebody was taking advantage of them. So in light of that empathetic moment, he's saying, I need you to take care of widows and orphans as if they were own, your own. I need you to be pained in the same way you'd be pained for those who are around you as you would be if it were your own family. God is calling us and has always called us to be people of empathy, people who care about what other people are going through and are moved to help them to navigate the problems of this life. Why would God want us to care? Why would God want us to be the kind of people who were pressed about those around us, who felt some kind of way about those who are around us and what they're going through and were moved to help them? Real, real simple. Because God himself wants his people to be people of empathy because he is a God of empathy. God watched you. He saw you wrestling, struggling in your sin. And he did not think it enough to just sit up in heaven and be like, they're going to be okay. Someone will take care of them. He certainly did not take advantage of you in that space, but rather he took off his glory. The Bible says he laid aside his crown. Paul says he emptied himself and took on the form of a servant. He came to, to walk in the places where you walk, to live in the places where you live, to deal with the stuff 
that you deal with so that you would not have to deal with it. Corinthians says that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might be called the righteousness of God. Not only did he literally put his feet in our shoes, but he also allowed us to place our feet in his. We are seated in his place because of what he did in our lives. And so the God of empathy is saying, my people cannot have experienced this grace, experienced this empathy, only to turn around and subject other people to maltreatment and mistreatment. My people, the people of the God of empathy, must also be people of empathy. So love your neighbor as yourself. Care for those around you as if they were yours. Put your feet in somebody's shoes. Walk a mile in somebody else's moccasins. And God will be glorified in the fact that we, his people, are operating in the example set by us for him. I hope that this blessed you as much as it blessed me today. I look forward to talking to you at some point in the future. Until then, grace and peace.